Philippians, the fourth chapter. If you don't have a Bible, raise your hand. I want to make sure you get one. Amen? Amen. You might have forgotten this message. Uh, it was the theme for this year. Amen. Turning me into we. Amen. Part three. Amen. Look at somebody and say, turning we, me, turning me. into we. I'm kind of weak on that this morning. Say it again. Turning me, turning me into, we. into we. Now, you may ask the question, how do I do that? It's always been about me. But how did I get beyond me and it comes to be us? Amen. We. By making a sacrifice willingly. And if you make that sacrifice willingly, you're going to make a good team player. Somebody say amen. amen. If you make that sacrifice to help others, not just this congregation, but everywhere you go, amen. what I'm trying to get you to see is that when you get beyond who you are, when you get beyond the things that satisfy you and start reaching out to others, amen. you'll begin to see the manifestation of God like you've never seen before. Amen. Because that's a sacrifice that you're making to reach out to others. The same way that Jesus made a sacrifice on the cross. When those who cranked up their necks to look at him laying on the cross. Recognize that he didn't die for himself. But he died for you and me. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. It's important to understand that, that life is going fast. Oh, y'all don't understand what I'm saying. Life, life is like a roll of toilet tissue. Come on, somebody. Somebody say, what do you mean, Pastor? Ask the question, what do you mean? Life is like a roll of torches. I'm saying the closer to the end it gets, the faster it goes. <laughs> oh, y'all don't act like y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm trying to tell you this morning that, well, you know, we got to stop being selfish and start turning our life and our power over to God. Amen? We can always satisfy the flesh. But it's God who we need to satisfy. Amen. In fact, it's beyond me turning into we. It's no longer we, but it's all about him Amen. and what he did for us at Calvary. Amen? Amen? So you see, it's important that prayer will help you create a sacred relationship. Look at somebody and say, prayer will create, prayer will create a, sacred a sacred relationship with God. With God. Amen? It ain't about, uh, you know, I, I'm not worried about what the world doing because uh, my health and your health is far more important than the world's bad habits. Somebody say amen. amen. You're going to see what I mean in a minute, amen? Because a good team player is a, a team is a, a group of individuals who may have a different needs but are pursuing a common unified cause. Amen? Amen. A unified goal. When you got a certain goal in mind, God going to save who he wants to save. Amen? amen. Somebody say amen. amen. It's no longer me, but it's we now. Yeah. Amen? That's our theme. I don't know if I'm going to ever touch on this again, but if the Lord will, I'm going to do what he tell me to do. Amen? amen. So let's go to uh, the, uh, the fourth chapter of Philippians. Starting in the first verse, Paul, who really fell in love with the Philippian church, because the Philippian church supported Paul when nobody else did. Oh, come on, somebody. You know, he had seven churches of Asia Manor he could have preached to. He had all kinds of churches he had established along with Timothy and, and Titus. But when he went up to Macedonia, uh, they weren't as kind to him in Thessalonica as the Philippians were. It's always been a book I like, and I like reading from it. But here he, he, he pointed out certain people who befriended him, who he realized that I cannot further this gospel on my own. I need some help. Amen. Somebody say, I need some help. I need some help. My Lord. Amen. Therefore, my brethren, therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and long for my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. Now, you know, that's got to be kind if it came from Paul. Verse 1. 
Because he calls him beloved, I long for my joy and crown. Amen? Because of how kind the Philippians were in the body of Christ towards him when he was under house arrest. He said, I beseech ye, uh, you, Dias, and beseech ye, Sintinich, and that ye be of the same mind of the Lord. Verse 3 says, And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellers, help those women which labor with me in the gospel. I'm going to talk about some women today. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. I'm talking about some good women. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. I'm talking about some women that did the Lord's work. Amen. 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 Women that got beyond themselves and helped the overall body of Christ. Amen. amen. Stay with me now. He says, I beseech you that you help those women which labor with me in the gospel. With Clement also and with others, my fellow laborers, whose, name are not in, uh, whose names are in the book of life. He says in verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Everybody say rejoice. rejoice. Again I say rejoice. <laughs> and let your moderation, let your gentleness. Everybody say, let your gentleness be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Then he said in verse 6, be careful for nothing. In other words, don't be so anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplementation with thanksgiving, let your request, let your request, let your request, let whatever troubles you or bother you, or whatever help you need or whatever you're going through, let it be known unto God. Yes. Amen. 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 And when you make that request known unto God and the peace of God, yes. which passes all understanding, when you're going through something and folks don't understand what's happening to you, let that peace take control. Let that peace abide that pass all understanding shall your hearts be kept and your mind through Christ Jesus. Because I don't know about you, when you're going through something, I want my mind and my heart kept. Somebody say amen. amen. Because there are things you can go through life. Sometimes if you if your things don't change, you might go insane. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. If things don't change, you might go insane. Amen. amen. But you got to stay at peace with Christ. Not only your heart, but your mind. Amen? Amen? The devil can play tricks with your mind. When you're hard, you know who he is. The devil can't get there to bother that. Right. Finally, brethren, he says, whatsoever things, pay attention to this now, because Paul really gets inside our psyche here in verse 8. He says, now, you've been going through something in life. Your mind been through something. Your heart been through something. But he said, finally, brethren, Whatsoever things are true, yeah. whatever things are honest, yeah. whatever is just, whatever is up pure, and whatsoever things are lovely, and whatsoever things of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any spirit or any anointing come out of these things, if there be any praise, he said, think on these things. Because God is going to see you through what you're going through. Sometimes you're going to go through hardship and pain. Sometimes you're going to have ups and downs, and there'll be times when you almost feel like you're laying on the ground. But I'm here to tell you today that all we got to do is turn it over to Jesus. Turn it over to the Lord, and we recognize the source of all our power. Amen? Stay with me here just one moment now. So whatever is just, Whatever is honest, whatever is true, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of a good report, if there be anything come out of that where you say, mm, ain't that something? That's God working on your behalf. You see, things ain't moved around or shuffled around because of how we think. God is always working on your behalf. He says in verse 9, those things, these things are those things which ye have heard, both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do and the God of peace shall be with you. Amen. Paul recognized the Philippians uh, was a kind people. Amen. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me 
have a, a me 